Hi, I'm Kirsten Chick, author of Nutrition Brought to Life, and this podcast is a companion to the book. You can listen as you read Nutrition Brought to Life, or before as a kind of preview, or after you've finished the book as a refresher. Either way, I hope this helps you make some small changes that make a big difference in your life. Hello everyone and Happy New Year to those of you listening as this goes out. Whatever year or season it is for you right now, thank you for tuning in. We're now up to chapter 19 of my book, Balancing Hormones. So that's the focus of this episode. Hormones are tiny chemical structures that your body produces to send a message. That message is usually to start doing something carry on doing something, or stop doing something. Its message is usually heard when it attaches to a hormone receptor on the outside of a cell wall, or in some cases, the hormone is allowed into the cell to to deliver its message there. I tend to think of hormones as letters that need to be posted in the correct letterbox in order to be read, whether they're read at the door or deeper inside the house. (laughs) The letterbox is the hormone receptor and is specifically shaped to only accept a certain hormone. So you get insulin receptors that are letterboxes for insulin, estrogen receptors that are letterboxes for estrogen, and so on. You also have a nervous system that sends messages via electrical impulse, a bit like email or instant messaging. It's always good to have a variety of communication systems to complement each other as backup and also to provide different nuances. Hormones are produced all over the body and many of them from specific organs called endocrine glands. We've already looked at your main blood sugar hormone, insulin, which is released by your pancreas, and also some of the stress hormones produced by your adrenal glands, which sit on top of your kidneys. Those stress hormones are triggered by the pituitary gland in your brain, sometimes known as the master gland, as it releases hormones that generally prod other endocrine glands into action. This in turn is often prodded by the hypothalamus, which is part endocrine and part nervous system, and so allows the two systems to interact. Also up in your head is your pineal gland, which produces the melatonin that you need for sleep. Dropping down into your throat, you have a butterfly-shaped endocrine gland there called your thyroid, which has tiny parathyroid glands nestled in its wings like the dots in a wing pattern. These glands work together to regulate your bone strength. Your thyroid is also responsible for your metabolism and can affect your heart rate, temperature, energy levels, weight, bowel transit time, i.e. how loose or constipated you are, and a lot more. Your thymus sits near your heart and is involved in your immune function. And finally, you have reproductive hormones produced largely, but not exclusively, in the ovaries or testes. So if you've had a hysterectomy or been through the menopause, for example, you will still be producing estrogen, progesterone and testosterone, just in smaller amounts to before. All of these hormones and endocrine glands influence each other. This means that long-term stress, for example, can have implications for sleep, reproduction, blood sugar balance, and thyroid health, for example. Equally, a thyroid imbalance can affect your stress responses, reproduction, and so on. It also means that if you want to rebalance an aspect of your hormonal system, you may need to address a number of areas. For example, when working with fertility or menstrual health, it may be necessary to build in support for stress hormones, blood sugar, and your thyroid. 
We've already covered a lot of this and you might want to revisit chapter 14 for specific adrenal support. You may also have picked up that you can get everything you need to make thyroid hormones from seaweed, especially kelp. The tyrosine and iodine that are the main ingredients for both T4 or thyroxine and T3, triiodothyronine, which are your primary thyroid hormones, plus all the vitamin and mineral cofactors you need to make T4 and then convert it into T3. This is important as T4 isn't really that effective, so you need to convert as much of it into T3 as possible. This takes place in your liver, so the previous chapter on liver whispering is also important here. If you're taking thyroid medication, then increasing your seaweed intake may upset your prescription dosage, however, so please don't do that. Balancing reproductive hormones is a huge topic, but I'd like to give you a few basic pointers here. The main hormones we're talking about are estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, and that goes for all of us. We each need different amounts of all of those according to our sex and time of life. They directly impact on fertility, whether that's sperm or egg production or menstrual cycles. They also have quite profound impacts on everything from body hair to inflammation to mental health. There are estrogen receptors all over your body, for example, including in your brain. There are also three different types of estrogen, E1, E2 and E3. E2, or estradiol, is the strongest and most active in menstruating women. E1 is weaker and the primary form in men and postmenopausal women, while E3 is weaker still and is dominant during pregnancy. You break estrogens down in the liver, largely using the methylation and glutathione pathways mentioned in the liver whispering chapter. And your gut microbes can influence them to be recycled back into whichever form is needed. So check out chapters 11 and 12 again to remind yourself all about your microbiome. You also break down xenoestrogens in the liver. These are toxic pollutants that mimic estrogen and disrupt your endocrine system in ways that can contribute to cancer and other illnesses. Xenoestrogens are sadly everywhere, in the air, earth and water, in plastics, pesticides, solvents, cosmetics, furniture and cleaning products. You can reduce your exposure by choosing organic food and natural personal care products, reducing plastic use and so on, but you can't avoid them completely. So please give your liver some love. To finish off, let's look at some nutrients you need to make and regulate your reproductive hormones. Vitamin A from liver and eggs, or you can convert it from beta carotene in orange and green leafy vegetables. Vitamin C from raw fruit, raw green leafy vegetables and raw onions. Vitamin E from nuts and seeds. Vitamin D from sunshine and oily fish. Methyl B vitamins such as methylfolate from green leafy vegetables and methylcobalamin, a form of B12 in meat, fish and eggs. The minerals zinc, magnesium and boron, which you can get from pulses and nuts. L-arginine also from nuts and seeds. Indole-3-carbonyl from brassicas, such as cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, and omega-3 fatty acids from oily fish, nuts and seeds. So a mackerel and egg salad with lots of green leaves and a sprinkling of nuts and seeds would be ideal. For vegans, perhaps a nutty salad with a good quality B12 supplement eaten in summer sunshine. A lot of this overlaps with the adrenal, thyroid, liver and microbiome support we have looked at before. So hopefully you're starting to see how it might not be too daunting to start putting all of this information together into a programme that works for you. The next episode should help you a lot more with this. 
It's called Chapter 20, Creating More Flow.